I'm not saying the weather's turning, but uh, a little guy invited me to the Lollipop Guild and said we're not in Kansas anymore. I'm like, of course we're not in Kansas, stupid. This is Michigan. <laughs> Hello and welcome everybody to Halid RV. I'm gonna try to get this done before apparently the tornado hits and takes me back to Auntie M. This is the stunning 3761 Front Living Montana here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. It, I mean, if you're thinking of full timing, this is maybe uh, one of the areas where you may want to begin your conversation. One of the cool things about this is how it provides separate defined spaces. You have a kitchen, you have a living room, you don't have like a shared kind of mega room or anything like that. It has an amazing bath and a half setup. Although I want to point out this video in a sense covers two Montanas. It covers both the 3761 we're looking at today as well as the 3763 Butler Pantry which is the exact same floor plan but if you don't want a half bath in your kitchen if you're like I don't want a toilet that close to my sink get the butler pantry version that's what's really cool about this they've given us two alternatives and this thing fixes the problem most front living rooms have it has insano level rear outside storage because most front living rooms you don't think about it there's only one room upstairs so the outside storage on them the pass through up front is kind of scrawny that is not the case on this one uh, I don't think it's even derogatory to call this a mother-in-law suite. So uh, I tell you what, here's what we're going to call it. Cause obviously I can climb right inside this thing and be comfortable. I can throw a mattress in there. I can put myself a mini fridge down here. I call it macaroni all day. I'd sit down here. Just give me some Wi-Fi. I'm a phone, whatever. I'll be happy. This is a nerd haven. And this, this layout, it's always kind of tough for me to like know where to start. Partially because this floor plan gives us something a lot of fifth wheels don't, uh, even up in the full-time sector, and that is a clear definition of kitchen versus living space, which is uh, something I know that my mom always prefers in their big fifth wheels because my dad and I, we're always, I don't know, we, we get bored, and then we start talking to each other, then we start moving over toward the snacks, and that's where mom's at, then we end up getting in her way, and she's like, would you get out of here? So having that, like, clear true definition and, and separation of space i think is something that she really likes and it's it's the little things that help define it like you see that uh, that that ceiling light fixture there that kind of beam that goes across you notice there's a little curtain attached to that we'll get back to that in just a minute there's a lot of really cool things that this one has now up top here just like in the bedroom and bathroom in the back you've got a six and a half foot tall clearance and it's a linear ceiling meaning you've got the same clearance all the way across and windows Holy crap, Batman. That is one of the things this one does so well. Some RVs, you're lucky to get windows on one side or the other. This gives you windows ev everywhere, basically. Um, <laughs> pretty much everywhere, including that, that front windshield, which you'll see has the handy power elevator there. Notice how uh, we are completely carpetless, not just in the upper deck, but you'll see that persist through the, uh, the entirety of the RV. And they did something here I really like. Last several years, for a long time actually, Montanas have had uh, like this smoky glass drop down door for the entertainment center. And uh, the, the remote controls, infrared controller could see through it. But if you ever wanted to get in there and do anything with it, it was always kind of a pain in the neck. And now it's just a nice open shelf. It's simpler, smarter, easier to get to. I like it. I'm a big fan. Now, you saw one of the other really cool aspects of this floor plan the fact that, in a sense, it can act a little bit as an alternative bunkhouse, but it has amazing guest sleeping capacity because both of the, you can use one or both, but if you use both of the hide beds it just turns into one like m -m -m mega bed. And that is cool. And if you're going to be sleeping teens or grandkids or just adult guests up here, that privacy curtain that we saw is absolutely awesome for giving everyone the space that, you know, each individual person kind of wants and needs. Now, uh, once again, you saw that power televator there, uh, kind of squirreled away behind that electric space heating fireplace. That is a 5120 BTU electric space heating Tootsie Toaster. But what you're not realizing, unless you know Montana's pretty well, is the uh, air conditioner up here also has a 16,500 BTU electric space heating uh, heat pump built into it. Plus, the RV has 12 volt tank heating pads, meaning this RV effectively has a propane and an electric heat system, which can operate independently or 
simultaneously. So if you're ever asking the question, is it four seasons, as much as I dislike that phrasing, I, I don't know that I'm going to win if I keep fighting against it. Uh, the, the short answer is yes. Montana's are and have been 0 to 100 degree tested and proven since 2005. They were doing it way before people even asked, is it four seasons? They've just been doing it for a long, long time there. Now, right there, we got that power uh, theater recliner. Uh, very nice if you want it. Like, if you don't want to fully extend your legs, sometimes I like to just kind of partially extend the couch on my sofa just to kind of get the pressure off my calves. You know what I mean? You guys ever have, you ever do anything like that? Now, you may notice, and I want to address what is actually a really significant enhancement, but at a glance, it doesn't look as impressive as they had in the past. And that is the new air system that they're using on things like Cougars and Montanas. You look at it, you go, oh my gosh, they got rid of the Whisper Air? What a bunch of dummies. No, nope, no, nope. hold on here. So first of all, just a good real world example of the headroom that you have in here. Just put my hand up so you can see how much room's above my head. But what happened here is, first of all, Keystone has uh, these cool little uh, vortex style air ducts. And what that will do is create like a mini tornado and kind of like the water getting sucked down your drain. I look like I'm a conspiracy theorist right now, don't I? But it will pull that air out of the duct and into the living room, which is where you want them. The other thing is, if uh, you pay attention during this video, when I get up to the ceiling of the RV, you're going to see a ton of these things. By giving you multiple air outlet points, it reduces the individual outlet turbulence, which drastically decreases the amount of noise that you're hearing. So there's, uh, in, in a sense, it's, it's compensating for the non-whisper baffling. But they're also using the Coleman uh, Q-Series air conditioners. Q just means quiet. Once you have this thing cooled down, you put it into like eco mode or Q mode or whatever they call it, it is as quiet, if not quieter, than like almost any whisper air system I've seen. So I know that at a glance, you're like, well, it's not whisper air. It's still a double noise reducted air system. And Keystone did some measuring. They're pulling down superior CFMs from this air system, meaning cubic feet per minute. You are getting more cold air from the air conditioner down here out of the ductwork because up in the attic, it's hotter than it is down here. So if your air ducting is sitting there in an oven, the air that comes down here is not going to be as cool if it spends more time up there. So Keystone's letting the air get down here with less noise and more efficiency. This is a really cool thing. But the trick is I can't really, there's just not a good way for me to demonstrate it on camera. This is one of those things that when you see it and experience it in person, you go, oh, that does live up to the hype. Also, how cool is all this accent light crown molding? In the evening hours, you can pull, these are all dual section day night shades. You can just blot out all the exterior light, have 100% privacy, and without any main direct lights blinding you like you're, why did I do that? Um, <laughs> my wife my wife will confirm she didn't marry me for my brains. I haven't figured out why she married me because I was broke when we got together. Is it really just validity and the idea of uh, ladies like a sense of humor? Because I'm pretty sure it's all I got, definitely all I had. <laughs> so moving downstairs, one of the cool things about this one, again, is that you have a kitchen. Not like, uh, what, what do they call it in the house? A grand room or whatever. Now, they've updated the flooring in that dining area. We're going to come back and look at that in more detail. That is not carpet, in case you weren't aware. If you weren't following Montana the last couple years, they did an amazing job of getting rid of all of the carpeting. Now, when you move downstairs, you have minimum six and a half foot tall slides, but this kitchen slide is actually extra tall. It's a very rare, almost like custom slide, even among all of the Montanas, uh, to really kind of maximize the total storage capacity that you can get out of one of these things. And that accent lighting that we looked at, notice there's a little bit of it in the island. It's just enough, and there's a little bit under that little uh, coffee bar right there. There's just enough where once again, at night, you can navigate the RV without needing to turn on any main direct obvious lights. Now down here, we've got both our uh, central vacuum cleaner as well as the little electric dust pan. And then we start opening things up and you start realizing there's way more to this kitchen than meets the eye. So first of all, right in front of the entry door, although it's kind of nicely hidden away, we have our master control panel. Now, when you're looking at a standard full Monty, which is what I call this instead of a high country, the big luxury Montana like we're in, what's cool about this, it's still just physical switches. You don't have to be a Bluetooth expert or whatever to be able to run this stuff. 
You want to operate your tank heaters? Flick a switch. You want to open and close your slides? Look at this. This is another thing. It's really cool. It used to be your lower deck here in the kitchen, your dining and your kitchen slide, it, they're hydraulic, and they used to share one switch. Now, you could go outside and monkey with a flow control. Montana made it even easier. Everything just has a direct access switch. Although, when you go to a legacy Montana, you do get the in-command system similar to a Cougar, and that's where you pick up the R2-D2 effect. Now, I would say that really this is kind of occupying the space of your pantry down here below that coffee bar. By the way, did you notice in the upper corner of that coffee bar there, there are also uh, TV hookups, and you can reach the switch right there to activate the uh, rain-sensing Max Air vent fan. And then, if you so choose, uh, it's uh, these will always be prepped and ready for a third air. You see that electrical junction box right there? If you're okay with sacrificing that vent fan, you can actually upgrade this to be a triple 15,000 BTU air system. Which I think is actually enough to give you a brain freeze like you were eating a slushy. <laughs> now, either way, you're going to have an 18 cubic foot fridge, but you have a choice between a gas electric two-way, which is what we're looking at here, and a uh, residential refrigerator. In this floor plan, I love the idea for a residential fridge because I think this is more of a park-friendly floor plan. I like the idea of the active compressor cooling, but for traveling, this two-way fridge actually does offer easier travel access, which we'll see the slides closed in a little bit here. But first, we got a lot to cover, like that large convection microwave oven right there so you can cook some meals in a hurry. And remember, this is like a very atypical extra tall slide out giving us that uh, storage space right there. Down below, we got the handy little pop-up power tower uh, in case you know you got some little countertop appliances you need to run. And these drawers down to the floor over here, they are uh, residential soft clothes, and I love that extra little bonus drawer right there below that uh, extra large oven, which is kind of cool. So that's, that's another thing here, uh, a, a big difference in one of these versus a lot of things. Montana is and has been the number one most popular uh, fifth wheel for full-time RVers uh, for like 20-some-odd straight years, 22 years or something like that. They're just, they're really good at making sure that your kitchen cooking facilities for folks who are spending extended times uh, using these as a, you know, mobile home away from home, you can actually, you know, <laughs> cook. And the way they handle this island here is excellent because it's not as large as most of the islands in many of the Montanas because it does have that kind of separation between the rooms. Each room's not quite as big. They don't have as much space to borrow. So that countertop extension that flips up, it allows you the ability to gain counter space when you need it. And I would say underneath that's a perfect space for a wastebasket, except they already handle that. And I love the much nicer looking hardware on that wastebasket space right there. That is something that I, I think that they were really lacking in years past. They had a wastebasket. It was fine. It just didn't, didn't look as pretty and everything else looks so good in here. Now I realized I talked about the day night shades, the dual section roller shades that are standard on these but I never really demonstrated it. I thought, wow, what a perfect one, two, three opportunity to do that. Now, something I always like to try to offer are points of logical criticism for an RV. Things that I see or uh, have heard from customers as feedback. The, like, I, I mean, look at this thing. Look at this thing. It is absolutely gorgeous. But about the only point of contention I have in this coach, and I mean, we're talking pretty fine detail thing here that is frankly very easy to overcome, is I would just like to see the shade in the entry door. On a big luxury fifth wheel like this, it just feels right to me. But if that's the only thing stopping you from calling, we, we got screwdrivers, folks. We'll take care of that. Even the cool little screen assist thing here, you know? That is, uh, basically, you can use it to pull the door shut, but it's also, effectively, your screen door handle. It's just sometimes... It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be effective. Something that is both fancy and effective is the no knee knocker dining arrangement that we got over here in that carpetless slide system. Now, a uh, couple things here. If you're curious, the, the table does kind of easy lift. There's a little extension hidden under that. And you can see how it has a pair of fold away guest chairs. You can hide those in the bedroom closet, under the bed, in the pass through, in the rear mega pass through. Uh, I, I mean, you could leave them at home. You could you could do whatever you want with them. I suppose if you want to throw them on the burn pile, I don't even care. Throw them on the burn pile. But I do ask that you purchase the RV first. Um, 
The boss really doesn't appreciate that. Now, there's Mon Montana builds this RV two ways, and I want to run you through something here. So what we're standing in right now is the 3761 front living. It has a half bath over here, kind of off the kitchen space. Some people really like that. This is kind of the original. It's very popular because this has a rear master super bath. It's awesome. Like a, It's like a diesel pusher bathroom back here. And really, this floor plan is not terribly dissimilar in some ways from a diesel pusher concept layout. But if someone wants to use that, they have to go through your bedroom. And there's a lot of people who go, I don't like that. That is my private space. I don't want you all up in my space. But there's also, I think, a fair number of people who go, are you kidding me? I'm supposed to crap where I eat? And you know what? Fair. Montana agrees. So they make a second version of this. This is the 3761. The 3763 is the BP instead of the FL. It's the butler pantry. You get rid of <laughs> the, the, the butt seat and get the butler pantry. And that whole thing just becomes storage. We carry them both ways here at Halet RV. That is the only difference between them. It's just kind of cool that Montana gives you a choice. So looking at it here, giving you a little more up-close detail. Uh, they've What's kind of cool is the way that they've done the half-bath treatments and the master-bath treatments uh, effectively the same. And I tell you what, we're going to actually take an up and down pass at this bathroom. First, just to give you a look, that new vessel sink. You'll see those back in the master bath. I'm very interested to see what people think about those. So here's the thing with vessel sinks. They feel kind of up in your face, but the countertops were adjusted, uh, you know, so that they're not up super, super high. The other thing is because the plumbing and the, and the bowl of the sink is not mounted down below, it means they actually give you more storage in here, which is pretty cool. And I, the, just having the mirror flat against the wall because... I think you've got plenty of storage down here. I don't think that's a terribly bad way to go. And I think that's an unconventional but brilliant place to put the uh, uh, toilet paper roll. What do you think about that? It could always be moved, of course. Okay, so remember how I told you about stealth mode camping? This is what I'm talking about. It's still daytime. I've got all of the, 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 day, or the night shades pulled. So there's still even some exterior light pollution kind of bleeding in through here. But this is what I was talking about. Whether it's movie night or, you know, if you got a grandbaby over, they're not familiar, they're a little afraid of the dark or something like that. I'm not, I'm, you know, I, I, was, I was several years old before I was okay with sleeping with the lights off. But hey, neither here nor there. That's what that looks like. And I thought, you know, as we're melding backwards into the bedroom, what a perfect time to, you know, kind of showcase all that. And also showcase, look at the difference the lighting package makes. <laughs> the lights in this are absolutely no joke. Now we're looking at a uh, 70 by 80 king bed over here. And this floor plan, because it's a rear bathroom, not just a rear closet, they had to get uh, a little unconventional. So starting over there in that closet, you'll actually see that is all prepped and ready for our side-by-side -side washer and dryer prep, or you can just obviously use it as a nice big closet space. Then uh, as we back up, you see that under the bed, we've got good storage space right there. Now, uh, a queen bed is technically standard here. That being said, I think you're gonna be hard pressed to find uh, a, a Montana in stock anywhere intentionally with anything but a king bed like we're looking at. But if you have a king, you can always size down to a queen, you know? Um, the, uh, the big windows on both sides of the bed are great. And the bed slide was a little tight. They couldn't put side stands in it. So they thought outside the box and they elevated the stands up a little bit. I think that some people, they're gonna be like, this is brilliant, that really works for me. Some people are gonna say like, oh, I don't like that. I will tell you this, I have not found them to be a head knocker, just kind of sitting up and down a few times, testing them out myself. I haven't found that to be an issue. I do like how there's household and USB plugs built right into the slide box. I cannot tell you how incredibly uncommon that is. And I don't know if you noticed just now, uh, this light just kicked on. This is actually a motion activated light in this closet. Now that we're over here, I wanna draw some more attention to something. Uh, this nice hardwood piece right here, something I didn't tell you about in the kitchen is the fact that all of this woodwork is a stained hardwood. That's one of the differences when you go from high country to full Monty, luxury Montana like we're in, you get 
all stained hardwood. It's all pocket screws into the hardwood. That's it's not just here in the closet. That's in the kitchen. That's everywhere. That's one of the nice qualities about these. Also, the fact that this has a center support, I cannot, um, I cannot tell you how much weight I've what I've witnessed my mother hang onto the hanging rod of her Montana fifth wheel. And it's the little details like that that make the difference between that ride staying there in transit and then getting to their destination with a nice pile of clothes on the floor. By the way, have you noticed, uh, this is the headroom. Uh, again, we were in the uh, upper deck of the living room, but it's the same here as it is in the living room, and it'll be the same in the shower, which is nice. So now flipping the script, giving you the point of view when you're in bed. This is the headboard point of view, as it were. Um, the, uh, TV is downward angled a little bit, which is nice, so it's not quite near the neck strain. I love this big window straight across from you. It is partially obscured by the, uh, entry door right now, but actually, cool thing on that, Montana ships these with that door open, because that is an aggressive magnet latch, and, uh, I've actually asked around several Montana owners forums, uh, said, hey, you know, when you, do you guys use the magnet latch or the actual, you know, mechanical door latch for transit? A bunch of people said, you know, I never even thought about it. I've always used the magnet latch, but my doors never open when I get to my destination. Cool. Oh, uh, over here, that yellow sticker on the outlet. I might go, why is that there? Well, you might have noticed several of those in the RV. This is uh, where the inverter prep is located in this RV. Uh, every Montana standard has a 200 watt roof solar package, which is a good battery maintainer, a 15 amp charge controller, and a uh, prep for an inverter. There are multiple more advanced solar packages, and I will leave you a link to a video specifically detailing those for you. Taking a look at all the storage here in the bedroom to finish that out, because remember, we already saw the closet and below the bed before we skip back. To Actually, let's start in the bathroom cracking everything open. This thing has an amazing bathroom. That is some sweet linen space. And just like we saw in the kitchen, pardon my hand here, but plywood drawers down to the floor over here. And I get that that bottom drawer, it might not be something you're getting into every day, but it's not wasted. And remember how I said the vessel style sinks offer us more storage space. Again, one of my only points of criticism here is I just kind of wish some of that shelving was gone to leave me space for a wastebasket. That's a pretty soft critique because I don't know that there's a whole lot that I got to be too, you know, gripey about in this thing. Just to clean up and clear up all the visual for you, note too that accent lighting under that cabinet. That's part of the reason I really dropped down here and, and, and took a knee so that you could see that under there. Uh, because one of the nice things here is Montana's not using Labatt blue light bug zapper lighting for their accent lights. I think it's just a nice touch. I've said for a long time, I prefer white accent lighting myself. Speaking of white accents, um, the, uh, the cabinetry in here has changed color. And um, in case you're kind of curious, I don't know that I really showed this before, this is pretty fluffy friendly. Like there's a lot of space around that. And you'll see very similar space when we get over here into that one piece fiberglass molded shower. Handy little seating space there where Uncle Gary can shave his shins. And height adjustable shower hardware. Kind of like when you go to hardwood cabinetry in a full Monty luxury Montana, that's something that you get here as well. And just like we saw in the kitchen living area, another of those rain sensing like max air vent fans. Now, I don't think it comes as too much of a surprise to anybody that when the uh, uh, slides are closed, you lose access to the upper deck, well, the rear upper deck, as it were, since this RV has technically two upper decks. But look at this noise. You need to stop and get to the refrigerator, grab a bite to eat. You can't. And if you're looking for a place to sit down and enjoy your road sandwich, look at this. We have weirdly good access to the upper deck in transit on this one. And I don't know why anybody would necessarily need to stop in a parking space and uh, <laughs> lift the TV up on the televator and sit here and have a sandwich. But if you get one of those more advanced uh, solar flex packages that have an inverter, theoretically, uh, <laughs> you can do it. Enjoy the antique road show while on the road <laughs> and you know that crazy almost stormy looking sky that's rolling in it makes this thing really stand out by comparison personally 
I think it's looking pretty sharp. <laughs> now, uh, the very first of the 2022 Montanas that I first saw, I saw this new asymmetrical exterior look, and I, I was like, holy crap, what paint package is that? And I went inside and I started peeling apart brochures before I realized this is just what they look like now. They just have an absolutely incredible appearance package on this. Now, something I probably should have talked about earlier, but there's a lot to talk about on a Montana. How do you pick something to talk about first? Is the, uh, the towing of it. This is a big rig, ladies and gentlemen. It weighs 14,400 or 200 pounds or something like that. It weighs over 14,000 pounds. It's got double slides up front. It's got a pretty hefty pin weight. I personally feel this is something you're going to be better suited to having a dually or what if you're like, I, I don't want to tow it. I just want to leave it somewhere and get it parked. You don't have to go broke buying a whole truck just to tow this thing. Give our team a call. We can arrange delivery to you pretty much anywhere in the contiguous US. We can get stuff up to Canada. Uh, most of the time, I believe with current COVID restrictions, we can still do that. And have you noticed? the double power awning on this thing. You've got one, your, your larger awning over that, that kitchen slide, which kind of makes some people go, oh man, but they compensate for it, I think at least, by giving us a second power awning back here. And because it's kind of behind that slide, doesn't it sort of feel a little more private? You're sort of like telling everybody else, hey, you know, stay back. This is my private area. My picnic table's all the way in the back. If I wanted to chat with you, it'd be all the way in the front. I'm not anti-social when I can't, but I'm also, I don't know, I don't always want to chit chat with everybody that walks by. Don't get me wrong. I, enjoy, I love interacting with everybody all day on uh, YouTube here, but sometimes I need a break. Sometimes I just want to focus on my family, you know? We are riding on awesome Saloon radials, which have, I believe, a 75 mile an hour rating. Those are wet bolt fasteners, and you see that road armor suspension package? That is no joke. That is the real deal of Vander Holyfield right there. It absolutely provides a very impressive ride and handling considering the size of this thing. Now, we talk about considering the size of this thing. Look at this outside storage. Like I said when the video began, the uh, one of the hiccups with front living rooms is they very often lack good outside storage. I don't think that's the case. You saw my dumb self climb straight in there and I want to show you something else they've done that I really like and I think it actually really matters on the back. So these are magnet hold bags, but you have to physically release it. You know why I think that's really cool? Not for that little baggage door, but that big heavy skull crusher right there. It still has the magnet hold backs but it still has one of those latches so that if you bump it or if it's windy like it is today, cause I am mic socked up to beat the band right now. It doesn't fall on my head on accident. Plus you might notice those little silver tabs. If you live in wind country, you still want more uh, assurance. You can always add gas struts to this. Montana pre-preps their baggage doors for that, which I think is cool. You see the welded aluminum cage work they got going on in here. Everything finished off so nicely. One thing I want to mention, this is uh, this is an atypical model for two things. First of all, it's one of the only Montanas that only has an accessory hitch. It does not have a full towing hitch on the back uh, just because of the, uh, the stress demands that would be placed on this already kind of custom crafted chassis situation here. The other thing you might notice is what's missing. This is one of the only floor plans because that flip up door in the back does not receive a rear ladder to get up to the roof. So this is one that you will need a large uh, you know, ladder and have somebody hold it for you when you get up to the roof for your you know, TLC and your upkeep and all that kind of good stuff. Now the underbelly of this, uh, I mean Montana's are and have been hot cold camp rated like I said since 05 and counting. Enclosed, forced air heated, insulated, radiant barrier, tank heaters on all the tanks ind individually. Um, you know, they, they just do all that stuff standard. Six point hydraulic leveling. The things you expect on a big luxury fifth wheel, they're here. And I don't want to downplay the importance of those awesome features, but I think at this class and price point, it's almost unusual if something doesn't have them. Uh, a little look here at the, uh, the front pass through, since we couldn't really see it from the other direction. You see that enclosed docking center. You might've noticed in the uh, rear area, there was actually a heat duct down into that compartment. You see the same thing here. That is our central vacuum outlet on the far side. Inverter prep on that little box with the white sticker there. And this is our charge controller because again, the standard solar flex package on this is a 200 watt, uh, very solid battery maintainer. Now with that 15 amp controller, you could size up like you could add a second 200 watt panel. And here's what's really cool. You can have 
a licensed, authorized uh, Keystone facility like Halid RV add that extra Keystone approved panel for you and still have it covered under your warranty. That's a very unusual thing. Usually if a manufacturer didn't put it there, even if an authorized dealer does the work, it's not covered under your factory warranty. Now you don't have to worry about that. And again, I'll leave you a link in the video description where you can check out the other three more advanced solar packages in more detail and let us know which one works for you. So I've given you a, a lot to talk about, a lot to think about here. I would love feedback from you folks. Where did they nail it? Where did they fail it? What would you like to see different? And is there anything I could do better for you? I sure try to put a lot of time and effort into these videos, but if there's something I'm missing, let me know. I do leave you a link in the video description so you can always check current pricing and availability because this video could end up being a year or two old and I figure you don't care maybe necessarily what the pricing was when it first came out. You probably want to know what would it cost you today. That's why we do that for you. It's the only way we can always keep that accurate information out there. Short of that, ladies and gentlemen, we're family owned and operated. I got a bee swirling around the camera there. I don't know if you saw that. Honey Nut Cheerio guys over here trying to say hi to me. Stay. Away. I'm not allergic to bees or nothing. I don't need an EpiPen. I just don't feel like getting stung today. Regardless, when you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We're family owned and operated. We'd love the chance to work with you. So take care. Stay safe. Have fun. Happy Halo camping, everyone. Come on, Garchomp. Come on, Garchomp. Get him. Get him. I want to be the best like no one ever was.